Hey everybody, yeah, I'm sure you've noticed I tried today. <laughs> um, if you've been following with us, we in the book of James. And last week, I thought the passage was so relevant and so appropriate for what we're going through at the moment being in lockdown. And then I read chapter five and I'm like, oh, this is exactly relevant for us. And so I'm just so glad um, that even, even a book that was written hundreds, thousands, thousands of years ago, um, is so relevant for us today. And so I want to read James chapter 5. If you have a Bible, I'd encourage you to um, open your own Bible and follow along with me. Um, we're in James chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and you will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter, and you have condemned and murdered the righteous person who does not resist you. And so what this text is teaching us about is essentially um, how those who have wealth, how those who have privilege, um, how, they, how they use their wealth and what they do with their privilege. And I think for most of us, at least for all of us at Vox, we are all people who have privilege. Um, I think for many of us in lockdown, we're experiencing verse 5, you have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. For many of us, our biggest trouble at the moment is the fact that our internet speeds might not be what we want them to be. For most of us, we're not worried about where we will get our next meal. We're not worried about our finances. Sure, perhaps your parents are a bit worried about things like that because they have to provide and care for you. Um, but in terms of the global economy, in terms of everybody in our country, the people who live just a few kilometers down the road from you, I suspect that we enjoy far more luxury and privilege than they do. And this text is teaching us about where we place our hope and trust in terms of our possessions, in terms of our wealth, the things that we are working for. Last week, we learned that, um, that we cannot boast about tomorrow because God is the only one who knows what will happen tomorrow. And for many of us, we make plans and we feel disappointed when they don't come to be. Um, but God is the only one who knows, and so we should pl place our plans and our futures in the hands of God, because not only does he know the future, but he has the, the future completely in his control, and his plan will happen. And so today, this text talking about riches is really challenging us to make sure that everything that we strive for is not riches and wealth and comfort and luxury, that our plans are not to acquire these things, but rather that we plan to take all of these things and place our efforts toward the kingdom of God. And that means working for God and working for others, not yourself. And I know these things are almost completely unnatural to us because everything we want to do is to make ourselves happy. But just consider what it says. I mean, even though this was written so long ago, these, these descriptions are so relevant. It says, your riches have rotted and your garments are moth eaten. How often do you have to go shopping because... That, that amazing shirt you bought that just felt incredible when you got it and you wore it and you felt so great about yourself. And just a few weeks later, it just looks pathetic and you don't want to wear it anymore. Those things literally pass away. And even right now, so many people who had acquired wealth are struggling to keep it because they find that during lockdown, during this incredibly difficult time of, of the coronavirus, that they can't hold on to their wealth. It's slipping through their fingers. And for many people, they will lose almost everything. We don't have control over these things. And we have such a great example right now that, that who can know, who can tell, um, and that these things are actually temporary. But there is something that is eternal, and there is something you can work towards that is everlasting. And that's the kingdom of God. And so God is challenging us to make sure that our efforts are directed towards others and not ourselves. That every plan that we make is not just to benefit us, not just to make sure that we acquire the best education so we can get the best job, so we can get the most finances, so that we can be powerful and, and live in luxury. <laughs> 
in the earth to live in self-indulgence. The warning is to not follow that path. And that's really difficult not to follow it because it's so tempting. The warning is that we, we think about how we treat others. We think about how do we treat those who perhaps clean your home, those who literally mow your fields. I mean, that's what the text says. The wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. There is something we can do with our wealth. There is something we can do with our privilege. Even if you feel like you don't have as much as the person living next door, you probably have a lot more than most people in the world. And so with the wealth that you are given, with the privilege that you have, are you using it to store for yourself treasures in heaven rather than treasures on earth? Because those treasures will last forever.